the former Deputy Prime Minister, Barnaby Joyce. Barnaby got, Joyce, good to see you. We've got our, our reporters there. I see that the national media has been in Tamworth today as well. The rain was starting to fall, but just give us an idea how bad it is for your constituents. Okay, Laura, generally um, people still talk in imperial measures when they're talking about rain. We've had about four inches here in Tamworth, except for today, four inches for the year. Um, a desert gets about um, eight. So uh, we, it's like you've got a normal environment turned into a desert environment. When I drove up to see my parents before, so I drove back, there are gum trees that are dying. They are dying because of lack of water. Gum trees are designed for Australia, but they're not designed for the middle of a desert. And if you have no water, they die. We've got creeks that are just completely, they're not, there's no holes, there's no water, just rocks. That's all there is. And this is, uh, this is why it's not only its length, but its intensity. And today, with it raining a little bit, we've got 10 millimetres of rain, so that's uh, about a third of an, third, uh, third of an inch. Mm. Um, you know, that's good, but that doesn't break the drought. Well, how far are farmers away from having to, to destock? You know, how dire is it getting? Are some just w willing to walk away from it altogether? Well, you can't walk away, Laura, because the bank manager won't let you just walk away. You know, you've got debts to pay. Um, you've got responsibilities to your family. You can't just walk off. And that's why we, you know, it's so important for us to explain this to Sydney and explain this to Melbourne. It's, it's not like you can just close the door of the shop and say, oh, well, we'll come back when the, when the customers come back. Mm. You can't walk away because there's stock there. You've got a responsibility to look after them. You've got a responsibility to look after the plant and, and the fences and the house and all the bits and pieces that make up that property. And you've got to pay your rates and you've got to pay your insurance. And you still got to eat somehow. You got to eat, you know, somewhere. There's got to be some money coming in from somewhere. You've got to still make your car payments. Still got to put some fuel in the car. You, mm. You're living out in a, on a property. You're not living in the middle of town. You can't get public transport. And this, this is why there's. It, you can't just walk away. You have to yeah. somehow get through it. Well, that's why we've seen a big response from both your government and the New South Wales government as well. But there's been some criticism from some farmers that it's come too late. They're already gone to the, the wall. What, what do those farmers do? And is it a valid criticism? Well, you know, I, I, in any package, there, are, there will be at times valid criticisms, but you can't make that the enemy of the fact that you... Um, are moving in towards a vastly better outcome. When we started, for instance, with farm household allowance, and I commend the federal government for the huge step they took uh, yesterday, but when I started with that farm household allowance, when I was a minister, we had 367 people who had access to it. By the time I'd finished, there were well over 7,000 people who got access to it. And yesterday, they changed the threshold again so even more people could get access to it, as well as in creating a lump sum payment in there. And I think you know, we have to give credit where credit's due. That was a huge step um, and it comes at a big cost, yep. uh, but it's required. And the state government moving towards freight subsidies, that's a good move by the state government. I mean, the picture that you've just painted is one that's pretty dire. So $12,000, I can't imagine, is going to last all that long. Malcolm Turnbull uh, says that he, the door isn't shut, that the government has farmers back, that this is not a set and forget policy. So when does the government need to, to mm -hmm. revisit what they need to do. Is it in one month's time? Is it in six weeks? Is it in two months? And then at that stage, what will farmers need? Because as you say, there's no rain on the horizon. Yeah, well, uh, you have to, it's like a, a fire, it's like any natural disaster. This is a natural disaster. You, you have to monitor it day by day. You don't monitor a cyclone and say, oh, well, we'll be back in three or four weeks and see how you're going then. You have to monitor it day by day because it, it's a dynamic environment. It changes day by day. But I tell you what people do want to see is they people always say, oh, you should be better prepared for drought. And I agree, you should. But to be prepared for drought, the essence of a drought is lack of water. That is what a drought is all about. So anything that can store water mm. is a huge advantage. So where so do you want to see these dams the built term, then, Barnaby Joyce? Yeah, I, mean, I, I know, but I always seem to have to explain it as people say, why are you being on about dams? Because if you've got big dams, you've got irrigation, you've got irrigation, you've got capacity to get to grow loose and get bales of hay sure, to the cattle. Sure, but you know cattle. that's the you've easy argument. Where these dams are going to be built is the hard one, so where should they be built? Yeah, well, I, I can show you one right now. You go out to Dungowan, you can go to Mole River, you can go to, to Apsley, you can go... Uh, so, up Dean, Nathan Dam, you can go um, to uh, O'Connell uh, Connell Diversion up at Julia Creek. There are so many sites, Laura, yeah, where, where the but new what ones? we have... 
well, I, that they are new ones. If you don't get yes. them, there's one right just up the road here. Uh, the latest one we've done was the one we did here was the extension of Chaffee Dam, okay. and we've got Wilkwood Weir starting at the moment. But every time you start it, some green group pops up or some other, you know, flea jumps out and says, oh, we can't do it here because of the bogger moss snail or because of the boolong frog or because of the something or other, something or other. And all the state governments, you know, they fight and then nothing gets done and get complete inertia. Drought comes along, everyone goes, oh, where's the water? It doesn't help farmers at the moment, but is there a valid conversation to be had here about climate change? Yeah, sure, but what you said at the start is exactly it. You can't go into someone's living room with no capacity to buy the groceries, with cattle dying in the paddock, with sheep dying, they're going out shooting to, shooting cattle. Uh, they're absolute, the bank manager is screaming at them because there's no money coming in and say, well, what do I want to talk to you today to fix all your problems? But as I'm I just talk said, it doesn't, help farmers, this it doesn't help farmers at the moment to talk about climate change, but you also mentioned a longer-term strategy to deal with drought. So how yes. does com uh, climate change come into the conversation there? Does there need to be, you know, tougher measures to combat climate change so farmers aren't facing a severe drought in the future? Oh, well, I, uh, we've got a measure that's working in this city in Tamworth right now. We extended Chaffee Dam and now we have water for Tamworth. Otherwise, we would have run out. Now... That is dealing with the vagaries of the climate and the, the, the more sort of the tempestuous that's not a nature. That's preventative climate change measure. I'm talking about. Ah, yes, it is because. So, yes, but when it we is, talk about we, getting we emissions it, down, though, uh, that's what I'm getting to. That's the number of my question. Okay, but it, we, let's be honest, <laughs> Laura. We can get emissions down in Australia. Do you honestly believe that is going to have a, a three fifths or five eighths of you know what difference to the climate? Like, do you honestly believe? Well, what we I'm do in Canberra you. is going to I'm change asking, the climate. I'm asking you it, well, what it would, mean, what it would not, mean for it's, our farmers. It's not, it's not going to... Anything, any policy we do, it's more of a, a, a sense of commitment to a wider purpose. It'll have no difference on the climate whatsoever. Zero, zip, nothing. So you don't think there's what anything do that can make, be done for farmers in, on the climate change side and preventing a climate I, I, change? I, 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 if I thought that there was something we could do in Canberra, that honestly, that we'd all go into that big, wonderful chamber and vote on an issue that would actually change the climate and make it wetter, then I'll move the motion and we'll do it. But it's not. It, what we are doing there is people saying, I, you know, this is a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of a fraction of a fraction and somehow that's going to affect global climate. It won't. I understand the premise of the argument. What I get frustrated about is people believe or they pedal out there that that will somehow make it rain or make it colder or make have it warmer you... or make it anything. It won't. I mean, this is the number one issue for your constituents, this drought at the moment. Have you spoken to Malcolm yep. Turnbull directly about what you want to see done here? Uh, yes, I've spoken to Malcolm quite some time ago. In fact, in the joint party room, I, mm. I've, I've stood a, a number of times within the last half year just saying, guys... This is going to be the number one issue. If you don't deal with it now, it's going to bite you later on. It you is the number the one issue. It is, here it is. At the moment, with him, that you can talk to him one on one, give him a, a call from uh, Tamworth and say, "Come to my electorate. Come and see what our our farmers are suffering." Uh, look, I haven't I haven't spoken to him recently, but to be quite frank, the last time he gave me a call from uh, the Upper Hunter where he was uh, to let me know he was he was there and, and talking to people. I, you know, I. This is bigger than personalities. This is all about trying to look after the Australian people. And I've not only left a message for uh, Malcolm or corresponded with Malcolm, I've also corresponded with Bill Shorten in exactly the same way. I've said, guys, this is something we have to work together. Okay. Um, this is something that is bigger than all of us. Good to hear. Barnaby Joyce, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. You're welcome, Laura. A quick check of tomorrow's weather. Cold with showers and highland snow across the southeast. A dry day for the rest of the night.